I saw her two weeks ago and she was fine. She was fine. Nikki Liley's body was found here. A mother found dead, covered by leaves. No clues, no evidence. Just a little square of video. Smoking a late night cigarette on the porch. The last time she was seen alive. I said, are you serious? Call the police. Tonight, 2020 takes you inside that family's nightmare. Their home mysteriously hot wired with 21 surveillance cameras. Rolling nonstop, recording everything. This is Nikki, can I help you? Her husband, a security expert, trying out the latest equipment on his very own family. He was trying to watch the entire world around him. But is his wife just being mad? No, 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 no. I know for a fact I let it go. Or going mad. My wife has a long history of mental imbalances. She was a train wreck waiting to happen. A marriage unraveling, a father under suspicion. This is really freaking me out. The media obsessed. I'm not suspicious. This woman was murdered. And two crucial days of tapes missing. So here's a man waiting for a crime to happen every day. One finally happens, and he's got no pictures of it. But what happens after an autopsy on the computer? It was gold. Tonight, the sergeant haunted by the case. I made a promise to myself that day that I would never give up. The suspect's daughters defending him, taking their crusade public on YouTube. Finally time for us to tell the truth. And how it finally gets solved by a voice from the grave. I don't want any part of this freaking family anymore. What the camera didn't see. Good evening, I'm Elizabeth Vargas. Welcome to 2020 Saturday. And I'm David Mueller. Right here tonight, is it a case of a father trying to protect his family or simply wanting to watch their every move 24-7? That was the question behind a sensational murder case. And tonight, that verdict is now being appealed. But here's what we want to know. What do you think? Is a new trial warranted? In court, crucial evidence centered on those private recordings taken from a sort of command center right inside the home. Thousands of recordings that took investigators a year and a half to review. But where are the missing tapes? Could they solve everything? Here's Jim Avila. What would we see if your home was being watched inside and out 24 hours a day by 21 surveillance cameras? Watching as you sat on the couch in front of the TV, unblinking as you sneak outside for a smoke on the porch. Show me where you saw cameras. If you see the front door to the right of it, basically up in the corner, there was, there was a camera out there, kind of on the top eave, on the back corner of the house. Welcome to Sydney's Cove, a quiet cul-de-sac in Lawrenceville, Georgia, 40 miles north of Atlanta, a small town where the bells of the First Baptist Church can be heard in the backyard, and dinner time is marked by the rumble of freight trains. It's home to Matt and Nikki Liley, their daughters Amanda and Rebecca, and Nikki's older daughter Alex from a previous marriage. Why all the cameras? Matt's in the business. He sells security systems, a tech-savvy law and order guy who's become a one-man neighborhood watch. We sat down with Nikki's family, her father, Doug Chatham, her daughter, Alex, and sister, Amy. I knew that there were cameras all over the place because, I mean, he made a point to sort of brag about it, really. Um, it was a, sort of a source of pride for him. The house seems so tranquil on the outside. Matt and Nikki, both 44 years old, married on Valentine's Day, together 13 years, many of them good. She was Southern, an account, the breadwinner. Matt, a transplanted New Yorker, called her baby cakes. Nikki actually told me, you know, that she was in love with him. Their daughters, Rebecca and Amanda, now teenagers, posted this YouTube video of the couple's trip to Hawaii to frolic in the sun. My mom surprised my dad while they were down there and renewed their vows. She's happy. They were in love. That does seem like something people who are in love and mm -hmm. still care for each other do. Right. But just like Hawaii's famous volcanoes, this love affair is about to blow like Kilauea in the dark of night. And thanks to Matt's over-the-top obsession with security everywhere, we hear it all. Get out of my way before I start breaking this off. That's the way we're approaching this. The first I'm time, gonna start the breaking first time, time, I know you are. I know get you out are. Of that steel magnolia plus-size voice belongs to the petite Nikki Liley, five foot three, ninety-eight pounds, soaking wet. 
Matt is a giant oaf of a man, six foot five, 250 pounds, big enough to lift his tiny wife Nikki with one hand. But on some of these recordings, he sounds like a punching bag. I can't keep doing this. These fights that we're having. You are unbelievable. How you can dare sit here Lower and talk to me about how Lower I have spent my time. The reasons for their fights might sound familiar. Money and sex. The Lileys are $300,000 in debt. Their love life troubled. They are seeing a counselor. Pick it up. I am up. fighting for this marriage. Bulls that I see. You! Problem. Here, you want the cops? The problem that I see is that what you want is not me and not us. Matt's surveillance business has become his obsession. Watching, always watching. The porch cams, the yard cams, the driveway cams, all diligently documenting the daily non-events of suburban life. This guy has a system in his house that the, the military would be jealous of. You know, we're talking about a huge server bigger than something that we would even have at the police station. Alex moved out at 16 because she couldn't get along with her stepdad, Matt, and his cameras, leaving her younger half-sisters behind. It was very uncomfortable all of the time. You know, he had a camera in the living room that faced the couch. So if you wanted to sit down and watch TV, you were being monitored. But Matt insists there was a reason for all that surveillance. He'd grown worried his wife had become mentally unstable. I'm going to protect my child and make sure you're not a yelling, raving little first. They do not need protection from me. Worse, she had a habit of storming off. Get the out of my way. Can we compromise here? No. There is no compromise. Let's come. No. What I propose is that you calm down for a moment. If in a clear head you want to leave, I'm not going to stop you. Good. Now Matt's afraid Nikki might run off in a rage and get hurt. To deal with that, he turns to another of his tech skills, hidden audio recorders, in her purse, in her car, and using her cell phone to track her. Here's Matt's explanation. I'm recording my wife. I've got a tracker on her, you know? I gotta find my wife every time she runs away. I mean, I'm not some over-possessive freak. The girls still living in the house, Amanda and Rebecca, are witness to the constant marital battles. My mom. In that YouTube yeah. video, which will play a big role in this story later, they say their mom was the problem. She was acting crazy. She was saying how she was tired of the voices telling her that people were talking bad about her, and she was tired of the voices telling her this and the voices telling her that. That was June 28, 2011. Nikki calls 911 documentation of what Matt says he fears. She's running away from home, and he is trying to stop her. When they call 911, yes, my husband will see this, but let me leave the house. My wife, is, yeah, my wife is yelling and screaming and just woke up the children. Do you really want the cops here? I think my wife just brought a type of tantrum. I don't think we need the police. Let me have her tell me that, sir. All right, we need to pick up the phone, otherwise we're going to come. <laughs> you don't need to come. I'll stay in my house all day. I already have them dispatched that way. All right, thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. The cops come by to make sure things are under control, but Nikki doesn't even look at the officers. That's her bag, packed and ready by her side. Later that day, she takes it and leaves. And within hours, Matt has her then 12-year-old daughter, Amanda, call and beg her not to stay away. It's heartbreaking. Hey, Molly. Hey, baby, how are you? Good. Mommy, we need to go on vacation. All of us as a family. We need to save this family. The family doesn't go on vacation. Nikki comes home. They stay at Sydney's Cove behind closed doors with all those cameras rolling. Things seem to be getting back to normal. The family saved for two weeks. Until a July night, that small figure on the screen is Nikki. It's date night with Matt, dinner and a movie. And later that night, the Lily surveillance cameras show Nikki out on the deck for a smoke before bed. We can't tell in this tape, but the cigarette is not the only thing smoldering that summer night. Nikki Lily is about to disappear. When we come back, after 13 years of marriage and thousands of arguments, Nikki Liley is finally gone for good. And her husband says it's because she's crazy. Where's Nikki? 
and what do all those cameras say about her disappearance? Stay with us. Twenty Twenty Saturday continues with what the camera didn't see. A hardworking spitfire of a woman, Nikki Liley, mother, breadwinner, a woman who, despite her size, takes no guff from her outsized husband. And now she is missing. Nowhere to be found in the family's upscale four-bedroom house outside Atlanta. Now we can go inside with video obtained by ABC News. Are there any clues in here that answer the question, where's Nikki? Go ahead, look around. See any signs of a violent struggle? Any bloodstains on the carpet? Broken furniture? Sure, there's a gun in a holster, but it's not smoking. Nothing more incriminating than an unmade bed. And there it is, Matt's electronic fortress. And yet for someone so concerned with the comings and goings in and around his house, Matt waits two days after Nikki vanished before bothering to pick up the phone and call Nikki's sister, Amy. And he said, have you talked to Nikki? And I said, no, why? What's going on? And then he said, well, Nikki's missing. I said, what are you talking about? And he said, yeah, she hasn't been home since Saturday. I said, are you serious? Call the police. After that call, Matt did file a missing person report and told his story to police. He and Nikki had a fight. He slept on the floor of his office. And when he woke up the next morning, Nikki was gone. He says the only thing she took was her toothbrush. Her purse, her phone, all the tracking devices left behind. So I go upstairs to see what's going on. She's not there. He says she's been breaking down mentally for some time and just walked away. This is the weirdest thing, okay? This is really freaking me out, okay? This is not the first time she's run away, but she's never been gone overnight. Matt overshares with a cop on the phone, telling him the fight is about sex in detail. On the way home, I said to her, you know, hey, you know, you know, someone wanted sex. But the sex we've been having hasn't been anything special, you know. So I said to her, you know, hey, how about, you, know, how about you put on an outfit? I think that might have set her off. He says maybe she's checked into a hospital suffering from a breakdown. My wife has a long history of some kind of mental imbalances, okay? Now, Matt says he's had enough. He's done with his crazy wife. I told her if she doesn't straighten up, I'm going to divorce her. And I saw an attorney about it, too, just yesterday. That's right. Before police have even launched a search, and her family says before Matt has spread the word that Nikki has gone missing, he has hired a lawyer to divorce her. What was that about? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, my response to that, my reaction to that was, who does that? It was just all about him. It was never a frantic, where is my wife? And as if divorce is not enough of a threat, Matt goes down to the courthouse to fill out paperwork to have Nikki committed. Here he is telling his brother-in-law about it. I was at the courthouse swearing out a warrant for Nikki Liley for involuntary committal. By now, a multi-generational civil war is breaking out, pitting the northerner Matt and his young daughters against his southern in-laws, Nikki's family including her daughter, Alex. My mother was the farthest thing from crazy you could get. I mean, Nikki's family has a very different take about her disappearance. They resent what Matt is saying about Nikki's mental condition, and they're angry that Matt took two days to tell them she's missing. He wasn't worried at all about finding his wife. He was concerned about making sure that he spread the story that she was insane. So a week after Nikki vanished, Alex helps organize a search. Amy alerts the media, hoping to get the whole community involved. More than 100 volunteers, all in red, spread out through the neighborhood. Matt was not among them, skipping what may have been the shortest search in the history of missing persons. Ten minutes after friends and family had formed a grid, I just saw a huge big pile. It just looked it looked like it was covering up something. So I just started kicking away at it and then saw her body and her hair. <laughs> I heard somebody scream from the woods and I you know, so I went running up there to see what they had 
uncovered and it was my sister. Oh, oh dear God. I... Family members cry out as a coworker of the We're gonna be roping this whole area off. Gwinnett County firefighters and police arrive just minutes after people looking for it. Nikki Liley make a shocking discovery around 10. And I blacked out. I just, just remember hitting the ground. Nikki's body was found nude, less than a mile from her house. If she was running away, she didn't get far. Her body covered in leaves in a wooded area near the The finger pointing begins. This is Amy, moments after her sister Nikki's body is found. He waited two days to even report her missing. And he told me that they'd had a huge fight and that, you know, she wasn't well and that she'd had been having breakdowns and stuff. And But I saw her two weeks ago and she was fine. The missing persons case is closed, but is this murder? Investigators are talking with Liley's husband and searching the couple's home, but police say right now he is not a suspect. Certainly Matt's personal CENTCOM will prove he had nothing to do with his wife's disappearance. What better alibi witness than 21 cameras? So here's a man waiting for a crime to happen every day, sitting in his office, looking around. One finally happens. And he's got no pictures of it. Correct. When we come back, what the camera didn't see. Stay with us. Twenty Twenty Saturday continues with what the camera didn't see. Once again, Jim Abala. Take a good look at this image of Nikki Liley on her porch hours before she supposedly walked out on her husband Matt. It's the last picture of her alive, because believe it or not, in this house tricked out like a small casino with 21 cameras, none of them managed to capture a single image of her final exit. So did you, as an investigator, think, well, this might be easy. There's cameras all over the place. He's got a recorder here. You might get some evidence off of this. Correct. And did you ask him, can I see the night? Uh, he stated that when we came back to his office, the system was turned off. Cue the chorus, how convenient and suspicious. The most puzzling tape gap since Watergate. Only this isn't just 18 minutes. It's two days worth of critical video. Nowhere to be found. He would think we have it on video. I mean, this guy was serious about his video surveillance. Matt Liley tells police that after his wife had that cigarette on the porch, the last time she was ever seen, on the night of July 8, 2011, his elaborate monitoring system, designed to watch every move, simply went dark. Matt's theory? She stopped by his office, where he was sleeping on the floor, and pulled the plug on her way out the door, on her crazed walk into the night. Said she turned off the system. Without him knowing it. Correct. Even though he's in the room. Correct. Getting no help from Matt's cameras, investigators turned to Nikki's body under the branches. The body's telling you something else. Yeah, the body's definitely telling us that she didn't walk there. The body, we're working this as a homicide. Then there's the condition of her bare feet. That's something that's very telling of, you know, of a body being placed is the clean feet. Because if you're running around the neighborhood, you're going to get cuts. I mean, these were pristine. And the nail polish is clean and not nicked up. After an autopsy, the toxicology report reveals a tantalizing new piece of evidence about Nikki's last hours. In her system, they find high levels of GHB, the date rape drug. You know, in hundreds of cases, uh, accidentals, overdoses, homicides, suicides, I've never seen GHB in a toxicology report. And so that caught my attention immediately. Remember, Matt told the police the big blow-up that night was over sex. He wanted it, she didn't. But now there's evidence somehow he had his way, something he failed to mention in his phone conversation with the cops. Oh, I said, listen, okay, this has gone far enough. All right, I'll go downstairs once again, sleep on the couch. You go to sleep, we'll talk about this in the morning. But the autopsy is most notable for what it does not reveal. The Georgia summer is a killer's accomplice. We don't have an indication at that time because of decomp and seven days out in July heat of exactly the cause of death. There are no bullet holes, no knife wounds, no blunt force trauma. You thought she had been strangled, but there's no fingerprints either, right? And there's no marks around her neck. Right, because of decomp, we don't have the telltale signs of uh, strangulation. Matt Liley is definitely a suspect in his wife's murder. In fact, the only suspect. 
but there is not enough evidence to charge him. Nikki's family is beside themselves. Her daughter, Alex, almost feels guilty. Like there was something I wasn't doing to help fight for justice. There was something I was missing. Sometimes you just want to scream at the rooftop. He, mm -hmm. You know, he did it. Do something. Matt cuts off Nikki's family, isolating his daughters. This is taking all They skip a memorial for Nikki. Too. They don't even go to her funeral. He stops talking to police, too. Police say Matt Liley is not cooperating, refusing to meet with them. The case is growing cold and worse yet, the day before what would have been Matt and Nikki's 14th anniversary, Sydney's Cove is being vacated. Today we found two moving trucks in the driveway. Matt Liley is moving away from Nikki's accusing family. There is no recourse, so we feel very helpless. And the questioning Georgia cops. As far as restricting his movements, we don't have any right or reason to do that right now. Starting a new life a thousand miles away in a hilltop house in rural Londonderry, Vermont. And he's taking Amanda and Rebecca with him. Well, he's gone away, Alex, but the real downside is your sister's gone away. It breaks my heart, to, to be completely honest. It breaks me down. I practically helped raise those girls. Time is moving, but the case is not. Alex, Nikki's oldest daughter, is planning her wedding with no mother of the bride. The other two daughters are now teenagers. Sydney's Cove is foreclosed and sold off. A family divided, a case frozen in time, but not forgotten. At police headquarters, located poetically on High Hope Road, sits Sergeant John Richter, unwilling to give up on hope. He spends an entire year listening to what it's like being watched and controlled 24-7. I'm supposed to live my life running around wondering where a recorder is, what emails are being read. Who put that working? on themselves? No, man. Who People don't that? live that way. 1,200 hours that he says revealed to him the only crazy thing about Nikki was that she was married to a monster. God damn it. God damn it. Oh, your voice. I am not going to sit here and listen to this. Matt shows he's just as capable of losing his temper and according to Nikki, of using his hands, as well as his voice, to abuse her. If I wanted to do harm to you, I could have done it. Think I'm gonna harm you. I don't know, Matt. You tried to tonight. I did not. Bull s with six foot five, 250 plus pounds, with your hands around my throat, you had me pinned to the wall. All my homicide victims over the year, I've never had any, I've never met anybody, but after listening to these recordings, it gave me the uh, ability to, to know her. And you liked her. I think she was a wonderful person, you know, a wonderful mother, and by all accounts, she was a wonderful wife. She just couldn't do enough for one individual. And you became determined to get this solved. I wasn't going to give up. That devotion leads to a big break, something as good as a bloody fingerprint hidden deep inside Matt Liley's computer. This was enough to tip the scales. Control Alt arrest. Matt Liley about to find himself in handcuffs and his teenage daughters staying loyal to their father. How far will they go to prove daddy didn't do it? Jailhouse phone calls ahead. Love you, baby. Good luck today. I love you too. Stay with us. Twenty Twenty Saturday continues with what the camera didn't see. Seems like over the years, I must have passed this place hundreds of times, and I always thought of her, and I'd always stop and look. As years passed, some may have figured hell would freeze over before police would solve the strange case of Nikki Liley, found dead near her home in the Atlanta suburb of Lawrenceville. It's a day much unlike today. It's, uh, you know, not snowing, it's July, and it's hot. It is definitely freezing on this day more than four years later as cold case cop John Richter leads us to the little woods where her nude body was hastily buried under dead leaves and branches. Where was it exactly? It's right in this area and here, you know, amongst these, these trees. Detective Richter was part of the homicide team called out here the day her body was discovered. Here in these woods, Richter says he made a vow. That day when I was... I was looking at this person who was placed here, and it's like she didn't matter to anybody. So I made a promise to myself that day that I would, uh, I would never give up on this case or, or, or Nikki. I think we were all hoping for some sort of resolution um, by this time. For all Matt Liley's surveillance cameras, his Radio Shack syndrome, the fate of Nikki remains a blind spot 
not so much as a flickering image or telltale echo. The story had always been all that video evidence disappeared because Matt Liley's hard drives somehow got corrupted. Now, corruption, it's a, it's a broad term. Could have been an accident, sure. Could have been power went out. Yeah, the lightning strike or something, you know. But then John Richter, the cold case detective, has a white hot idea. He asked Detective Chris Ford, a forensics expert, to autopsy Matt Liley's hard drive, hoping newly available technology will exhume any evidence buried inside the computer. Oftentimes in my cold cases, I send off clothing, you know, so you might get a DNA hit on some clothing that you didn't prior. Well, in this case in particular, it was computers. It was the forensic stuff that I decided, you know, let's get a new fresh look at the computers and the forensics. Two weeks later, Detective Ford casually drops the report off at Richter's desk. And I look at it and I see that, I see the word deleted. And I said, oh, these video files were deleted. He's like, oh, absolutely, it was all deleted. Now the evidence is clear. This was no accident. Somebody intentionally deleted security camera video from the precise hours when Nikki had left or been taken from the house. The difference between the word deleted and corrupted for you is what? Deleted to me means it was deleted by a person. Somebody went in there and deleted, wanted this video gone. So now you got to figure out who had the opportunity to do that. Right. And what did your investigation and show? Coincidentally enough, the defendant in this case is, by his account, a computer expert, a surveillance expert. It's all circumstantial, but it's enough. The cops are now rebooting their case, and the timing couldn't be worse for Matt Liley. That's because just about this time, he's back in town, in federal court in Atlanta, to testify in a civil lawsuit over Nikki's life insurance money. Matt's lawyer in that case, Jeff Diamond. My perceptions is that he was uh, a caring father. Uh, he was uh, a big teddy bear, really. But big teddy bear has a big problem. Were you there in the court? I was outside. Matt Liley leaves the courtroom and gets in the elevator. He thinks he's going down to the lobby, but he's just going down. Detective Richter arrests him right there at the courthouse. Did you get to put the cuffs on him? I did, and it uh, felt good. We're finding out what led Gwinnett County Police to charge a husband in the murder of his wife three and a half years ago. Our affiliate, WSB, went straight to Nikki's sister, Amy, and showed her this video of her nemesis in custody. It's a thing I've kind of pictured in my mind for a, a, a while, but kind of had doubts as to whether to actually ever see it. Matt Liley can forget about spending that insurance money. Now he's fighting to keep from spending the rest of his life in a Georgia prison. You have uh, been charged with uh, murder. Matthew Liley appeared tired and dazed as the judge read him the charges. Dazed maybe, but not confused. From behind bars awaiting trial, these recordings obtained by 2020 reveal Liley has an audacious plan to spring himself. Make sure you tell people we have set up a YouTube channel to tell you the truth about what happened in our home. Okay. His secret weapon, his own daughters, Amanda and Rebecca. They get father knows best instructions from jailhouse phone calls to launch a YouTube crusade to defend him against Nikki's family. All these years we were told to be silent, to protect mom's image. We can't be silent anymore. My, dad, my daddy's now in jail because of these false allegations. It's time we tell the truth. That's even better. Just listen. They execute his instructions almost word for word. It's finally time for us to tell the truth and for us to call them out on their lives. And now's our chance. You know, say something insulting from this pathological lying family that doesn't want their dirty laundry aired. But the truth will come out. The family is making sure that we can't say anything, we can't argue to keep their dirty laundry from being aired. Then Matt uses his daughters to support his claim that their mother, Nikki, was crazy. My mom started pacing back and forth, and she started kind of mumbling to herself. Don't forget to tell everybody about the YouTube site because we want it on TV, okay? Okay. Love you, baby girl. Good luck today. I love you too. Riley got his wish. The girl's video makes news. As focus turns on dad, Nikki's own daughters take to YouTube to defend him. The video was created by the man's two daughters. This is the teenage daughters. They made a YouTube video in support of the father. It hurt a lot. Um, you know, they said some, some hateful things about our family. Um, they 
painted our mom like someone she really wasn't. As the mystery of Nikki's murder grips the streets of Lawrenceville, just past Scotland Yard Antiques, a street named Lucky leads to the courthouse, where the two sides of the feuding family will meet again. Happening now, lawyers are questioning the final potential jurors in the trial of a man who prosecutors say murdered his wife. Still ahead, the murder trial of Matt Liley. The star witness, the victim herself, Nikki Liley, is about to speak to the jury. She threatened to kill me. And the witness who almost stops the trial with just one look. What she does that makes the jury squirm. It was probably one of the most awkward moments of my life. I did I wanted to turn away. Stay with us. Twenty twenty Saturday continues. Under a threatening sky a year ago, a storm blowing in over the Gwinnett County Courthouse, Matt Liley is on trial, accused of murdering his wife. New murder trial in Georgia, where a father of two is charged with killing his wife, pretending she disappeared. Before he even calls police to report her missing, he calls a lawyer. In court, two powerful teams head to head, Prosecutor Lisa Jones. And the evidence will prove that Matthew Liley murdered his wife. Tom Clegg. Matt Liley's criminal defense attorney. He is falsely accused, pure and simple. Exhibit A, the autopsy. The medical examiner, often a case maker for prosecutors, helpfully testifies she sure does suspect foul play. But if the jury is hoping for something directly connecting Matt Liley to his wife's death, this witness is no help. She can't even say for sure how Nikki died. They don't have a rock-solid case at all here. I ruled the cause of death uh, as undetermined. Jurors such as Kim Munster say when it comes to hard direct evidence, at least at the beginning of the state's case, they're just not hearing it. Did any of that bother you? I thought from the get-go that you had to have proof. So I was like, I need something more. I need something more. And the prosecution got an unpleasant surprise when they called this woman to the stand, Joanne Lucy. Matt Liley's ex-wife. People in the courtroom say the legal bar suddenly turns into a singles bar. No objection, but it sure looks like the witness is flirting. Okay, uh, you're looking at him periodically. Um... He has beautiful eyes. He's known that, and he knows that I will always look at his eyes. He knows that. Was that part of what attracted you to him to begin with? Oh yeah, his eyes, his height, his physique. Okay. Even though they'd been unhappily and briefly married 20 years before, there was still something. But be that as it may, you still can't help but look at his eyes. No, they're beautiful. That was astonishing, okay? She was flirting with him on the witness stand. Goo goo eyes aside, Matt's former missus does manage to deliver some damaging testimony, confirming he got rough with her. He would like to push it down to the ground and pin you down and... I'm not a very strong person, so, you know, I was easy to pin down. Juror Kim Munster. I guess she loves his eyes and loves his look, but she doesn't like the things that he did to her. Because he did some, some things that are very similar to what he did to Nikki. Very similar. There were several nights that I would lay up at night and listen to her say, please get off of me, get off of me, you're hurting me. And Prosecutor Jones has much more ammo in her arsenal the computer forensics from Detective Richter's investigation. The cameras were working when this crime happened. Absolutely. It was intentionally deleted. But there is more. Those recordings of a marriage on the brink. Detective John Richter takes the stand to testify about the year of his life he spent listening to Nikki. They give me a rare view into a victim's life and how her life was leading up to her death. And, I mean, I, I, it was... It was gold. <laughs> Listen to this jail. Not just a garden variety shouting match, Richter and apparently Nikki believe Matt once made something very much like a death threat. The word out of your mouth. I should have let you kill yourself so I didn't have to do it. Don't deny it because those are the exact words that came out of your mouth. You are a liar. Then you should have let, I should have let you kill yourself. Why should I bother me to be the one to do it? And so here is the state's theory of the murder of Nikki Liley. What do you surmise did happen? After she and Matt come home from the movies, that last security camera gets a glimpse as she sneaks a smoke. 
very likely the last one of her life. He gave her some GHB just to lower her, her resistance level. And then, uh, you know, they had sex. Fed up with the fights over sex and money and terrified that his wife and meal ticket will leave with the kids, Matt Liley then makes certain his tiny wife, Nikki, will never raise her voice to him again. At some point, she was asphyxiated by him sitting on her, strangling her. So he killed her with his own hands. He did, absolutely. He killed her with his own hands, with his own body. The crime scene bears no signs of a struggle. The body, no defensive wounds. But a dead wife is still a dead wife. He's got to get her out of that house because the girls are going to get up soon. He, he puts her in the woods like that. So now he's got to delete the video, the only video that would show how she left that house. OK, so that's the theory. Prove it, says Matt Liley. His daughters, Amanda, now 17, and Rebecca, 14, are his best weapons. They arrive at the courthouse from Vermont. One after the other, the girls take the stand to defend their father. Is, is this gentleman here your dad? Yes. OK. And you love him, right? Of course. Very briefly, describe the relationship that your mom and dad had. They loved each other. Did they ever fight, argue? They did argue, yes. Did you ever see your dad hit your mom? No. Did you ever see any obvious injuries or bruises to your mom? No, sir. But for juror Kim Munster, just the sound of those terrible fights. My hands around my throat. My hands were not on your throat. The despair in Nikki's voice. You know, get off, I swear to God. Get off! Gave her sleepless nights. How hard was it to listen to her audio recordings? All I could think about when I would go to sleep is anytime I would close my eyes, that's all I would hear was, get off me, get off me, her screaming. There is just one more lingering question in this trial. What does Matt Liley have to say for himself? Rumors fly around the courthouse that he wants to take the stand. The judge even asks him. Um, Mr. Lally, have you had a chance to speak with your attorney about that decision? I don't think I can do it. OK. Um, Instead, in closing arguments, defense attorney Tom Clegg throws his client's personality under the bus, but claims the state That's fell far thing. short of proving he's a killer. He can be an argumentative SOB. He probably is pretty damn good at pushing people's buttons. What does that have to do with her? And you need to listen to her. Prosecutor Lisa Jones has the last word, making sure the jury leaves the courtroom with Nikki's voice echoing in their ears. Welcome to my world. You killed me a long time ago. Find him guilty. Because that's exactly what he is. It's a Friday afternoon. The jury has two things on its mind lunch, and whether Matt Liley will be eating prison food the rest of his life. But you have reached a verdict? Yes, sir. The verdict and an emotional meeting. Thank you so much. When we come back. 2020 Saturday continues with what the camera didn't see. I'm told by the bailiff that the jury has reached a verdict, so we're going to go ahead and ask the jury to come in. Judgment day for Matt Liley, accused of killing his wife, Nikki. Nearly five years to build a case. Three and a half hours to decide it on a Friday afternoon in Georgia. This is the moment Nikki's family, hand in hand, they can hardly wait. I'm going to ask you at this time if you would stand and read the verdict out loud. As to count one, we the jury find the defendant guilty of malice murder. As to count two, we the jury find the defendant guilty of felony murder. As soon as I heard guilty, I probably squeezed her hand so hard, I'm surprised it didn't break, because I was just so, <laughs> like, did he just say guilty? Did he say guilty? Are you sure? Oh, my gosh. You and, got mine, too. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lally, is there anything you want to say? I didn't do it, and I'll be found on the field. Matt and Nikki's younger daughters during the trial, estranged from her family, arrive in court just in time to hear their father sentenced for murdering their mother. I need you to stand up for this sentencing court.